Uh, so good morning. Uh, hope you have enjoyed the keynotes. Uh, I'm Fu Chiao from China Mobile. Uh, I'm from the uh, network and IT department. Uh, I'm uh, the project leader, uh, project uh, manager for the uh, China Mobile Experiment Network, uh, and also I'm responsible for edge cloud design, uh, acceleration, uh, lots of uh, enough related topics and works uh, within China Mobile. So uh, in today's uh, talk, I would like to share uh, the. Uh, National Experiment Networks of NFA testing in China Mobile, uh, what kind of uh, testing we have uh, worked on, and uh, 10 lessons we actually learned from uh, all these uh, testing. So uh, I will uh, first begin with uh, some of the basic uh, future network architecture in China Mobile. Uh, I actually use this uh, picture a lot when I introduce the future network for China Mobile. We say that uh, the, the future network is uh, based on new data center, new network, and new orchestrator, which the new data center is uh, uh, based on traditional central office. We will redesign so that it will have the NFV infrastructure base to support all those virtualized network functions. And we have uh, our new network based on SDN, so as to improve the agility of the network. And the new, new orchestration based on uh, orchestrator like ONAP to provide so, uh, service online and improve the service agility. Uh, we, the, uh, the future network of China Mobile, they are constructed as what we call the Telecom Integrated Cloud, TIC. Uh, TIC is actually standard units to construct the future network. It is uh, de deployed in a hierarchical manner with uh, core TICs stayed in the major provinces and districts, and edge TICs will uh, distribute it to far cities and counties. Uh, we say TIC is a standard unit because uh, uh, it, it, has, it has limited number of design templates uh, for NFVI, for VM, for NFVO. It has unified uh, hardware models and it will have a uh, standard network design. Um, so uh, we actually begin the kind of uh, NFV work uh, back into uh, 2012. And then uh, in uh, 2015, we built the uh, first uh, open NFV lab in Asia. It is also an open NFV lab that we donate uh, some of our resources to, to the open NFV community for NFV related testing. And within that lab, we actually have uh, about a 13 uh, vendors that joined the lab testing. And uh, in later uh, 2016, we kind of uh, uh, evolved this uh, open lab into what we call the Novanet Experience Network. Uh, we are targeting on future network architecture validation. We hope that we could build a, an experiment network so that we could validate the new technologies like NFVS and SDN, see if these uh, new technologies could work in a large scale uh, networks. So since uh, late, late 2016, we built this uh, experiment network in four provinces. Uh, we have uh, phase one finished in 2017 and uh, phase two finished this year, and we now just begin phase three. Uh, Within the, the experiment network, now we have seven data center sites include, and we already constructed 15 ticks. We have already uh, look into VNFs, inclu including NB in, uh, in, and uh, virtual BRAS, uh, virtual CPE. Uh, the eBot is actually the, the, the name for virtual CPE for enterprise user within China Mobile. And we are also looking into uh, VNFs, including virtual CDN and 5G cloud uh, um, uh, VNFs uh, in phase three of this year. Uh, we actually include lots of uh, vendors into this, this experiment network. Uh, we have like uh, <coughs> we have a, I have a counting. We we probably have nine virtual infrastructure vendors, five VNF vendors, three orchestrator vendors, and four SDN vendors. Uh, by the end of phase two, and now uh, adding phase three, I guess the number will increase as well. 
Uh, so this is a basic idea of uh, how we actually promote this whole experiment network. Uh, it, is, it is not just a network that you do testing, but we're also including self-integration and uh, some key features review into the whole experiment network work. Uh, we are try to promote this work in three threads. First, we will do the self-integration of the hardware, the different software, including SDN and illustrators from multiple vendors. And with this uh, progress, we actually can figure out lots of potential problems. And we could get fir first-hand experience uh, for this uh, whole future network integration and operation. And uh, where we should change, what we should learn in, in advance. These are the new things that uh, if you want to operate a new and a free network. And then based on the, uh, the new uh, network that we integrated, we are doing uh, multiple testing, include uh, uh, virtualized infrastructure testing, multiple VNF testing, uh, SDN testing, um, manual testing, and a lot. And then based on all the integration and testing experience and results we get, we actually begin to review the key features like uh, is the virtualization of uh, telco services ready enough? Uh, how should we actually benchmark and choose this uh, virtualized infrastructure layer? Uh, a lot of different things actually can be answered with all this testing. So in this uh, today's presentation, I actually will share 10 things that we actually observe and hope it will uh, help uh, some of the community work here. Uh, a little recap on what we do for the passing two phases. In phase two, which begins uh, late 2016 and end uh, in the middle of 2017, we, uh, we actually include uh, five data center across three provinces. We test the virtualized platforms from five vendors, uh, mostly uh, is what we call the, the traditional IT vendors like uh, Wind River, Red Hat. Um, and we have at that time one SDN vendors included for the uh, controlling of uh, uh, network within data center. We have three services considered then, and at that time we constructed 14 ticks. And uh, beginning in phase two, we actually include more data center and we have uh, new provinces, Beijing, to join the whole ex experiment network. Uh, we continue testing the virtualized platforms uh, with three chosen vendors from phase one, and we also add extra four vendors for phase two. And also in this uh, phase, we actually uh, in uh, inc increased the virtualized infrastructure testing cases to about 200 more cases. And, as this, and, and in phase two, we have more SDN vendors join the test, and we also test the, the uh, SDN control uh, among data centers. And we have uh, new services uh, included, Virtubiras for phase two, and we have 15 ticks constructed in total. Uh, in this September, we begin phase three. Uh, we, we still have uh, seven data centers for provinces, uh, but this time we move more our focus, focus to edge cloud uh, infrastructure testing, integration automation testing, ONAP field trials, and 5G network testing. Uh, so then I will give uh, some of the lessons that I, I learned, we learned uh, through all this work. The first is uh, what kind of feature actually should be tested for virtualized service. This is actually a question that have often been asked, especially from uh, IT vendors or small companies uh, who, are, uh, who are not actually the tr traditional vendors uh, in involved in this whole NFE activities. Uh, they are kind of curious what kind of testing you actually have to, uh, to uh, do when you have all these uh, VNFs move into your network. For now, we actually uh, we, we are still actually following the tr traditional uh, telco services testing routine. It's like you have functional testing, you have uh, availability testing, you have performance testing, but also we add some new testing about what we call as uh, virtualization testing. So uh, function testing uh, is uh, easy to understand. It's the traditional uh, network functions that you should uh, test uh, following the three GPP uh, specifications, uh, making sure that the virtualized functions uh, appears the same function as the non-virtualized ones. But for because they are virtualized, you probably would add more virtualization testing to make sure that they have some uh, so-called virtualized features like uh, scaling, scale out, automatic uh, deployment, working with the manual. 
And uh, for high availability testing, this is a little bit different from what we've done for the traditional uh, physical network functions. Uh, for the traditional ones, uh, they are actually just a giant box that uh, you, you have to uh, do the HA testing. But now since they are virtualized, you probably should look more deeper into the HA, not only for the hardware, but also for the uh, software. Like we have uh, testing for the VNF layer, uh, making sure that the function should follow the same SLA as the traditional uh, services, and also for the VNFC layer to make sure that the VN VNFC should be capable of self-recovery. And for performance uh, testing, we are actually uh, uh, having almost the same testing as the, phys uh, the traditional physical network functions, but we are kind of uh, want to also figure out with the same throughput uh, requirement, uh, uh, same with the, the, the phys physical network functions, uh, how many servers we actually need, and how is the performance. Uh, uh, if uh, probably there are too many servers required or products can hardly meet the performance requirements, it probably makes no sense for us to virtualize these uh, services for now. And lessons two is uh, are telco services uh, ready to be virtualized and deployed? This is actually also, uh, I was uh, being asked of a, a lot in some different situations. Uh, when they say, uh, do you think uh, really some of these services it could be virtualized? For us, uh, you can see that most of our testing mainly focusing on uh, core uh, network services uh, at the beginning. And then uh, in uh, phase two and phase three, we add more edge uh, services like virtual BRAS, virtual CDN. So uh, we had some, uh, some of the observation here. For the uh, virtualization of control plane services, we think they are, they are quite ready. But uh, virtualization for the user plane services uh, probably needs some further testing and verification. For example, for the user plane uh, for the mobile core, uh, the, the acceleration technology is something that we're worried about. And uh, we also observed a certain difference uh, of performance when you're using SRWA and OVSDPTK, because OVSDPTK sometimes we, we actually observe some experience, considerable performance fluctuation. So these are things that you have to take uh, better consideration into. And about the user plane for the residential gateway, uh, we actually have a considerable performance loss uh, if you use virtualized uh, user plane. So uh, again, the ex hardware acceleration should be utilized. And also, we have done some performance testing with uh, 25 gigabytes and 40 uh, gigabytes NICs. And we see that probably for user plane, these should be considered as well. So mobile core services are mature enough. We see a lot of vendors, they already have some product ready uh, things that they could put in our uh, experiment network to do the test. But the others should be improved uh, for virtualized uh, features, like uh, what we see for the virtual uh, CPE for enterprise users. Um, in phase two, when we, when we are do the testing, uh, most of the vendors' product, they cannot do scale in and scale out. And lesson number three is what kind of feature uh, should OpenStack be tested? Uh, I also work in the OPNFE community, and this is the question always raised by OPNFE community because uh, we are working on the, uh, the OVP program, trying to give some verification capability to the community on the, uh, the open uh, infrastructure for telco. And uh, one thing we are we are considering is actually uh, what kind of services we can, we can, what kind of testing we can actually conduct for these uh, uh, OpenStack uh, services to make sure that it, they actually fit into the telco requirements. So uh, for us, we actually have uh, quite complicated uh, virtual infrastructure testing spe specification. I guess uh, for phase one, we have about 50 test cases. And then moving to phase two, we increase that to 200. And uh, now, I guess the specification is more than 300 test cases. So it's a, it's a huge workload. Uh, we have a, a test case including uh, functional testing, interface testing, performance testing, availability testing, and uh, uh, physical infrastructure provisioning testing. Uh, um, and uh, for the functional testing, they are actually quite basic 
um, you can imagine includes the virtualization function for the virtual uh, hypervisors, uh, uh, virtualized resource management for the VM. Uh, they are actually quite general. But uh, for interface testing, we are more uh, working on making sure that the VM non-spawned interface follows the open source, open stack non-spawned API, hoping that uh, using this, it will help us uh, to uh, ease the, the interface between the NFVO and the VM. And for performance testing, we actually have uh, multiple tabs. Uh, for example, stress testing, how many VMs or uh, subnets you can actually create for the given resources. Uh, compute testing, how much time it will take to create, delete, or recover a certain amount of VMs. Network forwarding testing with uh, vSwitch, and that's all we. Um, and also availability testing, including the availability for the VM, for the hypervisor, the VM, and the database. And, uh, then comes to lesson number four, is, uh, is OpenStack platform good enough? Uh, we actually, uh, we actually do, uh, did a counting once, uh, how many uh, virtual infrastructure vendors we now have. I guess it's the number is actually reaching to 12 or 13, actually, at least in China. And uh, we, we have, uh, I guess, almost all of them tested in our experiment network. Not, uh, not fully tested. Some of them are quite uh, complete testing. Some of them are just uh, 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 about the, in phase three, about the 50 test cases being tested. But we, we kind of have some general feelings for, for all these platforms. We see that uh, almost all vendors they could gain quite high pass rate for the functional testing because they are quite basic. But the major difference actually appears in performance testing. Uh, and we do see uh, closed source vendors somehow have uh, some better results. And uh, um, most open source vendors they cannot meet the requirement for telco ability. For example, we have uh, specific uh, test cases for VMHA and hypervisor HA, which uh, we also see some uh, ongoing work here in OpenStack for the Massacre project and so, but it still will take some time for the open source vendors to act actually include these features into their product. And uh, uh, almost all, uh, uh, T all the uh, systems that we tested remains to be improved for the capability of managing and control the physical infrastructure, which actually is a, is a basic requirement for telco. And uh, lesson number five, should we choose one vendor of OpenStack? This is actually a big question in China Mobile. Uh, I guess it's also the same, same problem for the other operators in any other uh, large enough countries. Uh, you have so many vendors and you have a uh, huge areas you have to provide a service with. So the pro is uh, uh, if you have uh, one vendor, uh, OpenStack RESTful API sometimes uh, a vendor stri strictly follows, but we still observe the, uh, that they may have some uh, different extensions or parameters, uh, which we, we, we take lots of time actually look into. And uh, the IoT for hardware, OpenStack, SDN controllers, VNF, VNF manager, and a field is a huge workload, uh, especially when you have multiple OpenStack vendors. It, it almost uh, several times of the whole workload. And also different vendors, they also have uh, different version planning, and it's difficult actually for us to coordinate the different vendors' version for long-term deployment. So bringing more more than one vendor of OpenStack into our cloud is actually risky. But also there are a lot of other cons. It is actually uh, risky to, for us to only have one vendor, uh, especially when this in industry is changing so quickly. And also in, in large countries uh, as China, um, you, you can hardly have one vendor that could have the capability to support the cloud uh, within the whole uh, country, especially when you move to edge, when you have uh, more than thousands of data centers that you, that you should provide uh, cloud infrastructure with. It's impossible for one vendor to do so. And uh, so uh, for now, I guess uh, China Mobile is moving to the thread that we are having more vendors in OpenStack. That is the, the current answer I could have for this. And uh, lessons uh, num uh, number six is uh, related with SDN. 
uh, we actually have some uh, testing with NFE, work with SDN within the data center, how they should work, how the integration is going on, how is the performance. And we see that, well, it's possible that within one tick, you could have Veeam and SDN controllers from different vendors. Uh, of course, you can have them from one vendor that will ease a lot of uh, problem. But to us, the, the problem is uh, the SDN controllers, they actually have to work with a lot of hardwares, like the firewall, uh, like the, uh, the gateway, the, the TOR. Uh, and, uh, and the interface between the, the SDN controllers and these hardwares, they are quite uh, vendor limited. You cannot have uh, different vendors uh, of SDN controllers to work with uh, other vendors of hardware. So somehow we are kind of purchasing these uh, hardware, these firewalls, gateways, together with the SDN controllers. And then if they are adding together with the VM, that will be a, a huge uh, procurement for us, which is uh, somehow pro probably will bring some problems. So we are seeking whether it's possible that we could have uh, VM and SDN controller from uh, different vendors. So uh, SDN controllers northbound is ac actually interconnect with OpenStack Neutron. So that is a standard Neutron plugin, which uh, we, we actually have found little if any problems. So the main problem is actually located in the southbound API, interconnected with the, the virtual, uh, virtual switch and the hardware. For the hardware, it's almost impossible for us to decouple the controller with the hardware. Uh, but for so software, uh, we actually see that uh, most of the uh, 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 VM, uh, the VM, uh, uh, VM vendors, they actually bring their own virtual uh, virtual uh, vSwitch uh, into the, the, the virtualized infrastructure. And uh, so uh, if the VM and the SDN controller are from different vendors, the SDN controller probably need to work with uh, vSwitch from uh, a third vendor. Uh, and that could be a problem. Although we know that we have uh, OpenFlow, we have OVSDB at this place to, to do the interface decoupling, but uh, the actually different vendors, they have a uh, different proprietary development of their SDN controller and their vSwitch. And uh, OpenFlow and OVSDB are far from uh, okay to cover all these interface issues. So for this, we, we could see that it's a still a long way to go. Uh, for lesson number seven, uh, what's the difference between core and edge? Uh, this problem actually raised when we begin to uh, build the uh, ticks for the virtual BRAS, for the virtual, EPC, virtual CPE, and, and for phase three for the virtual CDN. We see that uh, the core ticks, they are more cloud-like data center. They have large amounts of servers, uh, lots of services, huge virtualized pools for resource sharing and scale in and scale out. So it's uh, more like ju just a cloud. So the mainly designed for control plane, no specific requirement for acceleration for now. And the capability of service management of both uh, core and edge like the NFEO, the VNFM, all these things, we expect that they will deploy it more in the core. But for the uh, edge ticks, they will be quite uh, different in cities and, and, and small uh, county side. Uh, like uh, in cities, we still see that the data center will probably have uh, more than 100 of uh, servers. Uh, so that will be more cloud-like in, in the cities. However, when you move into the far edge to very small counties and even access point, probably you have a quite, quite small tick, um, less than 25 servers, for example. So uh, this will uh, result you you have to design a different uh, uh, in infrastructure probably for this edge. We still hope that we could use OpenStack here, but uh, probably should take better understand, uh, better consideration for the whole uh, footprint, uh, for the whole network design for the open stack. And also for the edge ticks, they are mainly designed for user playing. So probably you should have uh, more consideration on the acceleration, on the data forwarding performance. Uh, so uh, uh, I actually have uh, another presentation last time in OpenStack actually give more uh, observations for what we have did for the edge tick. And uh, lessons number eight, uh, 
more details for Ashtick, what actually uh, we need from operators. First, of course, is lightweight. Uh, this actually, I also see there, uh, there are a lot being talked about in this week and yesterday's uh, presentation related with Edge. We see that the control plane, including OpenStack, Kubernetes, SDN controllers, they should, uh, they should all be considered uh, to have a limited uh, uh, resource and to use at Edge. And the uh, container is something we should consider, especially when you have MEC applications, including this uh, Edge network. Uh, you probably need to put, provide with them the con container as a service. But uh, how to provision these containerized resources? Together with the virtualized resources uh, you already probably have at the Edge for the VNFs, uh, this is something that we have to take better consideration. And also, multi-V orchestration and management probably is a necessary thing uh, when the network is distributed in a large cloud. And so that you could ease the, the, the management for image, for patch management, and for the API. And also, unmanned self-provisioning uh, is something that you should care about more in the edge. And uh, this also somehow requires high reliability for Edge and probably might be contra uh, con contradicted with the limited resources here. And uh, acceleration. Acceleration is uh, very important for the Edge. Now we have DPDK, SLV, a lot of smart leaks, FPGA, GPU. How to actually efficiently utilize these uh, acceleration resources and also to virtualize these resources so that the, the VNFs uh, sit uh, on the virtualized layer. They can see the resource, use the resource in a, a manageable way and also an abstract API should be defined so that uh, you, the VNFs sit at the virtualized uh, uh, layer. They, cannot, they do not need to worry about what kind of uh, acceleration chips they are actually using. And uh, we're also thinking that probably a general resource pool for both the uh, telco functions such as 5G, UPF, and the uh, third-party applications like MEC should provide at this level. So this will mean that you have to take better understanding on how to manage these uh, unified resources uh, and etc. And uh, lesson number nine is uh, how should we do the integration? Uh, we actually did uh, lots of integration for, for the different ticks. We see a uh, lot of issues uh, during the whole integration work. How, however, we do see that these issues can decrease as our operating staffs gain more experience. And uh, also onboarding test is very important since the software integration can change unexpectedly. And um, uh, it is almost impossible actually to do all these testing pure manually. So we're kind of working on the automatic integration and testing tools so that we could do the uh, integration and testing using some uh, uh, automatic ways. Currently, we have a team uh, within China Mobile. We have developed uh, almost 65% uh, of the virtualized uh, infrastructure test cases automat uh, to provide the automatic uh, test uh, uh, suite, suite so that we could do the infrastructure testing automatically. And also we think the fine-grained automated integration and testing procedure should be defined to replace the traditional integration and maintenance procedure in operators. This will bring key values for the network virtualization. Uh, so the last one, what else should we test it? This is actually what uh, we, we also would like to conduct in the following phases of the Novanet Experiment Network. First one is 5G. We see that there are still lots of technical gaps actually exist at the edge, like lightweight uh, flu uh, control planes, like accelerations. These things should all be tested in some experiment network to figure out the gaps. And uh, another thing we should look into is the cloud native thing. Uh, lots of discussion actually in open source company, uh, community, but actually less few trials for telco use cases. Uh, a suitable framework to host the container and the VNF, sh uh, VMs should be uh, worked out. And also the, the related manual work uh, workload should be also defined. 
And uh, again, acceleration, cost and power efficiency sh should be considered uh, for software and hardware acceleration for user plane services. And also we see huge gaps here for acceleration abstraction layers, which is something this uh, open source community should also work on. Uh, so that's all for today's presentation. Uh, any questions? Thanks for the presentation. Uh, I want to ask uh, when you were discussing the vendors, um, do you mean all the China vendors or uh, no? We, uh, we actually are open to not only to China, Chinese vendors, but also vendors from abroad. But uh, you know it's a national testing. You have to work in different provinces. So you, uh, we at least have the vendors. They have some resources in China could support this kind of testing. So currently, I can see we have uh, Ericsson, Nokia. We have Wind River, Red Hat. Uh, Marantis is uh, sometime in phase one. So not only limited to China, Chinese vendors. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this uh, great uh, presentation. I just curious about uh, something from this page. Uh, I can understand you have a very big experiment uh, in the last one or two years, but here you mentioned uh, the key technology is missing is lightweight zero touching. Uh, I'm wondering from your practical uh, experience, what is you think is most, uh, the worst here? For example, what do you think is the most heavy weight and uh, need a lot of manual touching in your experience? That might be very, very good uh, uh, feedback to the community. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for our experience, we see that the whole procedure that you bring up the, the OpenStack cloud, the, v, uh, the VM layer, layer, the hypervisor layer, they actually take more time. And once that, uh, the, another thing that you should worry about is when you have the orchestrator, the VNFM, and the VM working together. This is something that takes a lot of time. Although we, we have specifications, we have the SC, uh, we have the OpenStack APIs, but always problem exists here. So these are things that actually take time. And for what is a uh, heavyweight, currently we actually uh, think that probably the, the uh, OpenStack uh, control plane and the SDN controllers are two things that we should need to cons take into consideration for lightweight design. Because uh, for the orchestrator and VNFM, you still have uh, solutions as to put into the core and have it uh, control the, the VNFs located at the edge remotely. But uh, at the edge, you, you have to have your OpenStack. Uh, you have to have your SDN controller somehow. These things, they are too big for now. For example, for OpenStack, normally you have at, at least three uh, control nodes. For SDN controllers, now almost all the vendors uh, reply to us, they, ha they have two uh, servers they have to locate for the SDN controllers. So these are things we need to look into. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hey, um, Sebastian from Intel Digital. So, um, quick question about the, uh, the uh, future structure of Edge Cloud and the uh, um, outlook of what you're trying to test when it comes to 5G and beyond technologies. Um, I mean, as you probably know, we are working closely in 3GP together on SBA architecture. So, the service-based delivery of the, at the moment, functions in the core network that should be delivered at some point at services and instances. So, is this part of your Edge focus to actually support SBA solutions, or um, is this something that is not on the radar? Thanks. Um, uh, I'm actually not responsible for 5G, so I don't think it's uh, proper for me to answer that question. That is more 5G uh, strategy uh, things that I have to have my other colleagues to answer. Uh, for us, uh, our targeting for the whole uh, TIG, including core and edge, we're providing for the future net, uh, 5G network. We are working together with the uh, 5G people, hoping that we could fit into the requirement from the five, new 5G cloud. That is actually how we, we, we program this uh, whole network. Yeah.
Hello. Um, do you actually have any network function on, on production? Uh, maybe control plane or do, do you manage to, to I mean, all well, this is testing, but on production, did you, did you release something? Uh, we actually have few trials uh, for virtual IMS and uh, virtual EPC, but it's uh, not a project. This project is only for technical experiment, and then once that, uh, the, 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 the VNFs are mature enough, we put into few trials and future in production level, yeah. And, and do you know if any of those, if the IMS or the virtual EPC that are currently running, um, is that based on a solution with uh, OpenStack and SDN integrated? <laughs> um, I know they are, uh, the, the few trials, they are using OpenStack, of course. And uh, for the experiment network and the few trials, we use the same specifications for the OpenStack, for the northbound API. So they are, they are purely OpenStack. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you.